Hatab, which means peace in our language, Nawapik. Welcome to question and answer closings. Well, I should say welcome everyone <laughs> to question and answer class. Um, you know, the master teacher, Panabab Yanun, without him, nothing that we do is possible. Because he was the, the guy that answered questions. You know what I'm saying? When, when he first started teaching, his whole style was to answer questions. And people liked the way he answered questions so much that it, be, it began, you know, our journey, you know. But Panabab Yanun is the master of heaven and earth. There are many different beings that come through the master teacher. And Panabab Yanun is one of them. Yanun is one of the most feared beings in the universe. Many beings know him and the, and the other beings that he rode with, they're nothing to play with. You know, so it's no accident, you know, as we were discussing earlier, it's no accident why they have him locked in Florence ADX Supermax. There's no accident that they came to take his blood repeatedly and try to find out, you know, do we got who we think we got? We got the one. They know what, what they got. You know who they got. You know they know what they're dealing with. But what they don't know is that they messed up. You know you can't take a being like that and think that you ain't gonna have the repercussions to pay for it because you're dealing with a being that's not a human being, but is beyond a human being. He's a natar, which is a supreme being. You know what I'm saying there's really no way to translate it. You could say overseer. But there's really no just translation for it, because if I do it, then it takes away from the meaning. But he's a Nathara, for all intents and purposes, what we know as a God. A living, walking, talking, breathing God. Make no mistake. I mean, like, something could be going on right here, right now, which it is, and he sees everything that's going on right here, right now. Simultaneously, he sees everything that's going on in other places. You know? But with that, you know, welcome to class. You got any questions? Start firing away. This is what we're here for. You know, if there's anything that we can't answer, we get the answer. Because we got the answer. You follow? Hit me with the first question, though. I guess I just want to start with questions about the master teacher. Um, the first time I came, I was invited back and I came to the um, Festival of Lights. So that was really nice. And I went home and I guess I wanted to Google and try to find some more information on my own. But I guess when I'm a little bit confused, it's just like some of the answers that they give like online are just like so in-depth. I kind of get lost. Right. So I guess I want to just I guess get a little more origin about the master teacher. Well, see, a lot of times when we talk, we tend to get try to try to get happy with people. And yeah, you know what I'm saying like, and it's and, it, and we don't realize, yo, just keep it simple. You know what I mean? So, just what specifically did you want to know? I guess um, has the master teacher always been a master teacher? Is this something that he had to come into later in life? Is it something that? You know, he knew about himself earlier, like, just, I guess, more along the lines of origin, like, when I was reading, it was saying that he was a singer or something beforehand. Well, Pandababi Anun, since a child, has always been a person of many talents. And at his birth, actually, this process started when he was in our beloved Um Fatima, which is his mother, who recently made her transition. And with... A being like that, they have to alter the mother or the mother tat's DNA before the child is, is, is born or before the child is conceived even. They have to alter her DNA. So that it starts out with the mother. And then once the mother's DNA is altered, then you have, you know, the right environment and the right environment for the child to grow. And then when the child comes out, that's a whole nother, there's a whole nother animal you're dealing with for lack of a better way, lack of a better way to say it. But the master teacher as uh, our, our um, 
tribal mother has taught us. Since he was young, he was able to do things. He was able to sing. He was able to run fast. I mean, like, you know, the fastest kid on, guy on the block, you know, he was able to speak different languages without going to school to learn the language. He was able to talk to people in their native tongue since a child. You know how when you're in church, they say you're speaking in tongues? Mm -hmm. He was really speaking tongues. Like, knowing what he was saying, speaking tongues. You know, and um, as he grew, she said that he kept, it's actually a, a book that uh, was recently put out by our tribal mother, Imam Ted Mud Patawre Atumreye, and it's called My Brother the Extraterrestrial. And she was explaining that when he was younger, he could do all of these things. And she said he would disappear for days at a time. And he would get nosebleeds and things of that nature. And she said one time she walked up on him looking for him. Because they used to get in trouble for him when he disappeared. You know, your little brother disappeared, you get in trouble for it. So they, she looking for him. I think she was by her grandmother's house, which was in New Jersey, which is where he was staying. And she said she walked up on him and she saw a craft lifting up from where he was coming from. And it was then, I guess, she, it clicked into her that he wasn't just saying that he was being abducted because they didn't know what it meant. Abducted, you know, you're talking about years ago, you know. And she realized that, okay, he's not regular, you know, like quote unquote regular, you know, and they, there's still a mystery of exactly his birth and how everything kind of happened. Nobody really knows the real mystery, you know, or nobody's walking around able to tell it right now, anyway. But as far as that, and then you have when he was 25, uh, in 1970, when the seventh seal was cracked open, you know, saying that brought forth the other part of his being. And he actually came face to face with himself in so many words. And he realized what his job was to do and what he really had to do. We already in the 1960s, we already, he already had written Bible interpretations and explanations and Behind the Nine Ball, which was books explaining things about our culture, Wunduwapu, who people weren't really, or Wunduwap, who people weren't ready for yet. And as he started teaching Wunduwap, people weren't ready for it. So said, oh, what, y'all niggas wanna be Muslims? Come on, let's be Muslims. I grew up Muslim. Because remember, he, we, he well, I didn't say remember, but he came to this country as a, as a, as a boy, spoke, learned to speak English, and, you know, began growing up, and grew up in New Jersey, between New Jersey and New York, and, you know, live the life. You know, back then they sing doo-wop, so they, they, the singing thing goes, and being he's a person of many talent, the singing developed, it became, you know, music, but well, music is a language in itself, you know? In fact, we was instructed by the master to all learn how to play instruments, because it's necessary for our transformation. But, um, I see, I'm trying to keep it simple, because you say people be blasting off. Uh, the, the master just, Man, it's, it's, you can't really keep it. I guess you can't contain it in a, in, a, in, a, um, in a nutshell. But he's everything that you imagine that a supreme being would be. I mean, being able to communicate to people about situations that they're going through in their life that nobody else knows about. Then being able to communicate from the other side of what people have left here or transitioned to their living relatives about things that only them two know. Like if you, you know, your great grandmother may have passed, you say your great grandmother says that little thing that she gave you, blah, blah, blah. And you'll be like, oh, whoa, I didn't know yet. So, you know, when he, a master, literally, you know how some people say, yeah, I'm nasty that, you know, but then you ask him how to do something like, well, I don't know that part yet, you know, but he's a master in that he really mastered everything that we know about life. So if you was to ask him a question, he could answer any question that's ever been put forth to him. And he showed us that over 50 years. He stood before the people, go ahead, hit me with that first question. And question after question after question after question, you know, unless we weren't ready for it. Cause there's some stuff that we wasn't ready for. But he had the answer. He always had the answer. And then he hit us with a question that nobody answered since. Well, I think one person actually did answer it. I'm not gonna, I don't know if I'm allowed to say who, who that person was, but it was one person that did answer that question, and it was a female. 
but it was the graveyard question. And I try to put it as best as I can, remember it. And he said, you remember where you grew up at? Like, you remember where you grew up at? Yeah. Okay, you remember where the graveyard is at? Like the local graveyard or where the graveyard? Yes. Okay, you remember how big it was, right? Um, yeah. Okay, and I think, since you were young, all the people that have died since then, right? Okay. Have you been back there recently? No. Okay, when you go back there, and you go back to that graveyard, and it's still the same size, you have to ask yourself, how is it that thousands of people, just in that little town or the way where you grew up at, you know what I'm saying, because I, I don't know where you grew up at, but where, wherever you grew up at in that town, I imagine how many people have died over the years, how come the graveyard never got any bigger? How come there's no new graveyards? You never see grand opening, new graveyard. <laughs> How is it that all these people can keep dying and dying and dying and dying and dying and the graveyard stays the same size? So, you know, people came up with all oh, cremation, you know, they're cremating, they stacking the bodies on top of each other. But no, you have to take out a plot for each grave. This is my property. I own this. You know what I'm saying? You take out a plot and then when you, if you want to exhume the body, you know, we found out we got some type of genetic anomaly in our family. We want to dig up grandfather pops, you know, with all due respect and examine his bone marrow or what's left there of it. If there's anything left of his DNA so we can see if he had that trait. Now, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm doing DNA tests. I need to find out that's really my grandfather. Boom, boom, boom. We had some discrepancies of this and that. So after a while, you know what I'm saying, people came with all kinds of stuff. You know, they, you know, with the cremation, with a percentage of people that's being cremated don't match up to the amount of people that's died, so that wouldn't be it. And they say, well, they move in the graves, you know what I'm saying, they just moving them. You know, they just, you know, because it's still a headstone there. So even if they did move it, it's still a headstone there, so that would mean that you couldn't bury another person there, and if you did, where would you put the headstone? Because you could still go, I could still go to my grandmother's grave and, you know, leave a rock, you know how people we do, or leave some flowers and, and keep it moving. So, no, that can't be it either. And then with all the veterans and all the wars and all the soldiers coming back, so what has happened to the body? What, 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 what's happening that it's able to do that? And he said, when you find out the answer to the graveyard question, you're going to be running for your life. So, you know... But throughout the years, no one's been able to answer, like I said, one person out of hundreds of thousands of people have been able to answer that question. But he, he said, and once you answer that one, he said, I got 10 more for you. Because he's the master, meaning that he can ask you a question you can't answer, but you can't ask him a question that he, that he can't answer. He learned this whole planet's history in a matter of minutes coming here. Because when they come here, they come here they said it was a comet called Bennett when he was being born. And it was a green comet. But there's no such thing as a green comet. So you know these are beings that are coming here because there was other green comets that came recently within the last five to 10 years. There was, I saw one personally. I'm like, okay, that's not normal. <laughs> like, you know, I see a green thing coming out of the sky. I'm like, whoa, that's not normal. And I had to tap somebody else to make sure they knew that I wasn't the cuckoo nigga, you know what I'm saying, next week. Because, yo, I'm going to tell people I saw this. I want to make sure they saw it with me. I made them turn around and look, and they said, yo, what was that? I think that's what Ariana saw. Green. So, you know, but he told us that it was a comment they called Bennett, you know, and he, he, over the years, it's been so much. That's why I, you got to ask a, a specific question because there's so much that I don't want to lose you, you know, in the mix of it. But, yeah, the, but, yeah. His, he said he could have wrote movies. I mean, he could have been the greatest entertainer ever. But he said he took his interest in each and every one of us. And was, his job is raising souls, is creating beings that are supreme beings like himself. You know, that's, that's, that's what he has expressed to us, what his mission was, to, to make us un, like unto him, supreme beings. And get us out of this religious crap. Because we're so stuck in religion. You follow? Did that, did, that, did that help at all? Or? Yeah, you did. You did. Okay. What's the seventh seal? The seventh seal? The seventh seal was a marker in time. And it marked the first half of the 30 year period, of the 60 year period. And in Revelations, it's expressed as saying, 
and the and the um the trumpet blew in the first half an hour was up. Well, the, well from 1970 to 2000 represents that first that that half an hour, and it would no it says there was a silence for a space of a half an hour in the heavens, and that from 1930 I mean 1970 to 19 to 2000 it was 30 years, which is symbolic to that half an hour. But the next half of the half an hour was from 2000 to 2030. And that is called what we call as the hereafter. And that's the time that we're in now. Hereafter, the devil's rule is up because the devil's rule is up in 2000. So the cracking of the seventh seal, and it also represented an awakening, a new awareness. People became more aware. You remember the 70s, everybody, everybody was you know, conscious. Hey, brother. You know, yeah, man, you know, we got to get together, brother. You know, we got to... Because after the 60s and the turmoil that happened in the 60s, we had to have that. We needed that awakening. Baba explained to us in 1945, on June 26, 1945, 12 o'clock, when he was born, he said he was born because of what was going on in the planet. And because there was a cry in the planet so much, he said that our people was so hurt that he had to come. And a being that he, being that of his nature was raised from amongst us to be like us, to talk like us, to walk like us, but to raise us up. Because you wouldn't accept it if somebody just pop out the sky, hey, you know, I'm here. But he, he was raised amongst us. He learned our habits. He learned who we were. He learned to laugh at what we laughed at. He learned to be one of us. I once read a letter from Bible. He said, the whole time y'all thought y'all was learning from me, I was learning from y'all. I'm like, because it hit me, you know, when I read it. And, 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 it, and it made me, it really put things in perspective. Like, you know, we really have to treasure this being that's, that's amongst us because he's teaching us so much. And to be that humble to say that you learn it from us. When he taught us everything, I mean, he ain't watch a movie the same way anymore. And once you really get on the mind trip, you know how niggas be on the ego trip? They always looking for something to say, hey man, you know, I heard and this and that. He got us on a mind trip to the point that I can't even read a magazine or watch a movie the same way anymore. Because now I'm watching it with open eyes as opposed to watching it with half closed, sleeping, unconscious eyes. You follow? Yeah. <laughs> so, but, the, yeah but the seventh seal represents that awakening. You know, it, 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 it's the, it was the opening of a certain type of awakening. You follow? Anybody, anybody else have any more questions? Um, for my fellow friend over here, mm. um, is the government good? Mm. Which government? Is the ideology of government good? Maybe the premise of government is good. That's an excellent question. Government, insofar as structure, and so far as order, and so far as maintaining balance of a particular society, is it, it can be good, and then government that is off balance, or causes disorder, or causes turmoil, or causes chaos, is bad. But if you are one of those bad people that intend to cause chaos, you follow, then it's good. So it, it really depends on what side of the pendulum you, you sit on or you swing. Because you got sometimes, you know, we, man, look, man, the government ain't nothing, man. You know what I'm saying? The government ain't nothing, man. Sir, how are you going to pay for these groceries? Oh, I got EBT. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so we, we, we look at it on two, on two sides. It's always two sides of every coin, as the master always told us. He says two sides of every coin. So government can be good and then government can be bad depending on how you look at it. You know what I mean? Because there's, there's rules even in the galaxy. There's galactical, there's intergalactical laws, you know? And being able to follow these laws maintains order. And everything in the universe is really done by order. But then you have light, which is chaos. And everything you see in light is, is, is chaotic. Because light is chaos. It's almost like a good example would be if you're in a room full of roaches and the light is off, you got company and they come in and you leave, it's late night, you know, just 
flick on the TV, you know, she might see one or two, but, you know, she ain't really going to see what I got going on here. Yo, just light a candle, baby. Let's keep it romantic. You know what I mean? You ain't going to see the roaches, you know what I'm saying? But you flick on them lights, chaos happens. It's the same thing. Light birth chaos. Because in the darkness, you know what I'm saying, you got out formation. You know, out formation. You know, their whole job is to keep us in formation or in line. That's why they always keep informing us, to keep us informed. You inform if you're a Christian. You inform if you're a Muslim. You inform if you're a Jew. You're in form. You're in line. But when you step out of the box, you know what I'm saying, then you're out of formation. And that's why our doctrine has been scrutinized and been always continuously looked at and examined and re-examined over and over again because we are receiving out formation from the master teacher. You follow? But yeah, government is good as, 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 as good as it can be, you know what I mean, for any given time or purpose because you do have governments in the world that were corrupt. I mean, look at what's going on now in the world. People don't know or people do know that the government can't be trusted. We look at 9-11. We look at things like the $20 bill. You fold the $20 bill back, you see two buildings on fire. You're like, okay, wait a second. This can't be no accident, you know, that this is on the bill. You fold it a certain way. I mean, come on, this ain't no accident. And then you look at things like, you know, what's going on recently in Boston. And people, people question these things. They want to know, is this the government doing this? Is this a terrorist? Are they just saying it's terrorists? Is this just another trick? It's to the point we don't trust our government. And when you don't trust the government, it's chaotic. Even if they have the premise that is for the, that's for the good of people. If you don't trust it, it's chaotic. You follow? Yeah, man, it's, 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 it's to the point now that we starting to realize as a people that all we got is each other. And we really have to come together in love and unity because once we do that, and I don't mean love and unity like we all sit around a kumbaya. I mean, I mean, love and unity, like, or lamam inan jalus, when we sit, we speak in our own language. You know what I'm saying? When we begin to, when we begin to think about things, we're thinking on our own frequency. We're not thinking about, man, oh, Terminator, man, you remember in Terminator? We're not thinking as one, as, as, as how they got us thinking, how they got us watching their movies, as how they got us listening to their music. And we think it's our music now. But if you look at with hip hop and with this little R&B, I don't even want to call R&B no more. I don't know what it is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what, what are we talking about now? You know what I mean? I'm looking on Facebook. I've seen a picture of the guy who had his pants all the way down yonder. <laughs> like, you know, way down here. I mean, like, you know, that is, is, is that type of degeneration that brings us to this animalistic I want what I want when I want it. I can't maintain balancement in my household. Girl, if you get in my way, and I don't mean girl in that way, you know what I'm saying. If you don't get out of my way, I'm going to slap the taste out your mouth. You ain't ruling nothing. Sit your down. You know what I'm saying? That type of animalistic quality that makes us less than beast. And we've fallen and fallen and fallen because we've fallen behind a being that is a beast, that is an animal, a self-professed animal. Because when you get him with this dog, don't lie like you ain't never seen it. If you see a, a Kokazu or a Mukasu with a dog, how do they greet their dog? Oh, look at me. They lick him, French kiss him right in the face. Lick him all in the face, you know what I'm saying? So over time, periods of time, you have homo canine. You know what I'm saying? You have homo porcine. You're saying you have homo simian or human dog, human pig, human, ape, because that's how they acting. That's what they're doing. That's what their DNA is mixed with. I mean, I just don't have hair on the back of my shoulders. I just, you know, just don't have hair. On, you know, I don't have hair in certain places because what? Because I'm not an animal. Matter of fact, I should say I don't have fur in certain places because fur is fur. We call it hair, but really and truly, if a lion has straight hair, I mean straight fur, right? Go. I mean, come help me. Bear, dog, you know what I mean? Straight, right? So why is it fur? 
when it's on them. But when it's on them, we call it hair. Goldilocks. And they got the nerve to call the planet that they found Goldilocks. You see the game? They, they always try to make us, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. They always continuously bombarded us with this long hair image. And every woman, I mean, it, what, what is Wendy Williams? I mean, what... <laughs> You, do you, have you seen this thing? She got, a, I mean, what is that that she got on? How many, does she have like seven pieces of hair on or something? Is she growing a chia pet on her head? It's like we got this mentality that that's acceptable. Wendy, I feel you. And they all in the audience and I'm looking at this like, man, are we, is this real? This can't be real. This gotta be some type of a nightmare. Because our women is so indoctrinated, they scared the way they own hair. I'm like, not only are they scared the way they own hair, Texture, they just get away their own hair color to the point that niggas would rather rock blue and pink hair than their own hair, which naturally attracts the rays of the sun. They don't want to wear their own color eyes, and this ain't just the women. I see men doing the same thing. I mean, we going back to Nat King Cole's time, they was literally conking their hair. Well, I mean, everybody saw Malcolm X, right? I mean, burning their hair just to get it. Man, I almost got it white, man. You know what I'm saying? Just to get that slick back, man. We got the, the eye colors. We literally put in blue eyes and they contact. Some people are going as far as surgically putting, changing the eye color, and it affects the way the sun deals with your body because your our unique physical chemistry or biology literally attracts the sun's light and it helps us with energy. It gives us energy. We don't need that coffee. We wake up in the morning. I mean, some of us been on our job so long that we 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 doing what they doing. You know, they got to have something to pep them up in the morning. I mean, these people eating at 6 o'clock in the morning, man. What, what nigga eat at 6 o'clock in the morning? That's just too early for me. You know what I mean? Like, we really don't need it, and we follow them so much that, that we lost. I mean, look at our children. You grab the woman, you grab everybody. You know what I'm saying? If you grab a, 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 the woman, that's everything. So we are the only group on the planet right now that's pushing our woman back to our rightful position in front. Instead of having her sit on the back burner, oh, uh, you know, it is not permitted for you to make prayer, for you to lead prayer because you, you might bleed. If you bleed, Allah says you might bleed. Allah created your period. You mean to tell me Allah is afraid of you bleeding? You follow? Yeah, but that's where we at. We, got, we have to get past this mentality because in order for us to get our master free, it's going to take love and unity. And without that love and unity, we won't get him free. But we will come together and we will free our master teacher. You know? I have another question. Um, so you said that you have a question for Dr. Wendy. Yes. Um, what do you say to someone who doesn't know, you know anything about this? Um, to, you know, kind of push them into the know. I mean, I know you can only lead a man to knowledge, you can't make him think, but, like, I don't know, like, a convincer, something to say, to open the mind, I guess. It, it, the master told us, if a person is asleep, you can wake them up. But if a person is in a coma, you can't wake them up. They have to wake themselves up. So, you know, like that old adage, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make them drink. You know? I mean, you, you know, you can give them books, you know, talk to them, but if they just, look, man, I ain't look, man, look, look, man, I like cigarettes. I don't care if it kills me, look, man. As they got that attitude, I mean, it's really nothing you can do. You, know, you just waste, or, or you can just burn out your energy and keep wasting your energy, and instead of improving yourself, you can keep trying on this person at time after time, and then, you know, you get burnt out, and then you don't have time to fix yourself to make your transformation, then, you know, whose fault would that be, you know? Because a lot of us do that, and we burn ourselves out. Try to remember the name correctly, Nabirian. 
she was telling me about Nibiru. Nibiru. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Nibiru is a planet ship, and it's three to five times the size of the Earth. The reason why I say three to five times the size of Earth is because we know Earth went through many different transformations, for lack of a better way to say it. But Nibiru is has the ability to create holograms of itself, and it's a, a, a life-sustaining, uh, a self-sustaining craft the size of a planet. And it's on a 3,600-year orbit called Ashar, and it comes every so often. Um, Nibiru comes from the root word Nibiru means planet means planet of crossing, crossing the skies. I mean, it's, it's, you guys are open any question. Like, what, what you, is there anything you're trying to find well, out? No, I guess she was, I guess, explaining to me more about, um, like, the original passage to where, okay, so I read the book that I was sent. It's called Body Snatchers. So I guess I was asking more information about um, reptilians and things like that. So she kind of got into telling me the story of creation. So I guess, like, with Nibiru, I was just trying to, Maybe I guess gain more knowledge on you know our purpose here and you know the whole transformation and going back and so I'm not sure of my actual question. I guess I just want to know more about that and you want to know more about the transformation. You want to know more about our 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 cloning the cloning process that created human beings. You want to know more that's about it. I'm sorry. That's that's what I was asking about. Well, it's it's simple. It's you know we. We come from Panataru, who are genetic parents, who are our parents. And they literally took a being that were, took beings that were already in existence, such as the baboon, the gibboon, and different beings that were already on Earth. And they took their genetics and combined them with their own to create what, what we, who we are. So we are their children. So it's, it's only natural for any parent, a loving and concerning parent with a soul, to come back for their children. So in the process of Nibiru coming into this solar system, which would be the 18th galaxy called the Milky Way, from the 19th galaxy called Ilium, they it was a crash, a literal incident where they're coming and this is like you on a highway and there's a truck in front of you, and you want to get around the truck, but you don't realize it's something else there too, because another truck is the same color, and you don't realize when you get over, and then when you get over, it's a car there, and you're like, well, I'm trying to get out the way, boom, and you hit it by accident, and the truck driver's angry. They crashed. Look, come, Uranus and Neptune are very alike in color and structure and size, so one hiding behind the other one in the orbit, they didn't see it, so as coming through, you know, they, they coming through, they hit it. Or they, 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 you know, trying to not move out the way of one, they hit the other. And it, they hit this planet called Meldek, actually, which actually shares our solar system with another. When they hit Meldek, it, it, it destroyed all the communication devices on Meldek. And it actually killed every being that was on the surface. But the beings that were in the water, the troglodytes that lived in the water, who were already warrior class that lived on that planet. They were already looking for a fight. So they came out and they launched their ships and the barrel came, had his ships. And there was no way of saying this is an accident. We didn't mean to do this. And in, in the process of these ships being launched, there were several ships that crashed into what was called Teowat or Tamat or the planet now we call Key or Earth. And when it, these, Four ships, it was four of them, and they hit the planet Earth in different ways, creating the moon, the asteroid belt, Grand Canyon, and things of this nature. And being Panataru were on a journey looking for gold, and they found gold in that. They knew what, this is where they wanted to be at, but they also felt responsible for what happened to the planet. And so, being that they also put their genes here. You know, they 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 can't. They are coming back for their children, and they're coming back for that gold, which is which is actually has to be reactivated, which is in our blood, called Mathcozet. I don't know if I went too far with you, but 
it's basically, you know what I'm saying, to put it to put it as simple as possible, there was an accident and then there was things that happened that were supposed to happen and our parents are coming back for us. And the master teacher has been sent here to raise us up, to prepare us for that time. And with that, I'm gonna pass the class on to my good brother, Amon Ray Atun. Any questions? Is that clear? Yes. Yeah, I know. Okay. Um, my question is, how do you know when you're at the right vibration to be received by the ship? To, re to be received by the ship? Yeah, when they come back. Which ship? Well, you said the ship is coming back. They're coming back to get us. Your ancestors. Hmm? Yeah, your, right. your ancestors. Right. What we have to realize is that I asked that because um, I'm doing my best to get your mind to gear itself more open. Because when you say, to get out, just by going off what he says, you know, it could still be religion by your thinking. Not what he's saying, but by how you receive it. Because many times we're still in a religious mentality. And that's what uh, Pandabab Yanun or Atum Ray Malachi Kobino York has done for us for over the past 40, 50 years. He's opened our minds so much to get us to think. He had to prepare us to even ask our questions right. Not to elongate myself in that, but more so to just get your mind to be more open on the basis of, you say, ship, many ships are coming. Because when this vortex opens, there's gonna be many different beings coming in and also exiting. So some will be leaving, some will be coming in, all right? How you get yourself to that right vibration, or how would you know? First of all, is by asking the right questions. Your mind has to be at a certain consciousness. Let's say, let's go back to Genesis. And it says in Genesis that man became or will become a living soul or a living being. Well, that actually is talking about a becoming of something, a consciousness. Because a living part of you is dealing with the burning aspect within the body. That all is incorporated with what you eat and how that is taken through your intestines all the way to your bloodstream, to the pumping of your heart, to the activation of your brain cells. And the receiving and acceptance of information as well as outformation. So there's different parts of the body that have to be fed certain protein, certain nutrients from the planet because when they planted you in the planet, as it says in the book of Genesis, it says that a garden was planted. But most people don't get to see the reality of that. They're talking about planting what? What do you put in the garden? For what? To produce food. For food, right? Who else was placed in the garden? Adam and Eve. For food? No. How do you know? It's a garden. I don't know. I mean, exactly. Because we're talking about reptile beings. You're talking about God, but you don't know which God. And God got mad because these beings called Adam and Eve, and I say beings plural, because by the time you get to Genesis chapter 5, it says what? It says, this says, male and female created he them and called their name Adam, or Adama, which is blood, all right? So the thing is, is that what you're talking about is a being which was producing, because it says he was to be what? Fruitful and what? Multiply. Just the same way you take seeds, you don't plant one carrot in the garden, you plant rows of carrots. And you want them with the seeds in which in this day and time they're taking out the seeds of the fruits and vegetables. And you have to get your reproducing seeds from the government. But I, I, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, I was going to ask you a question really quick. Um, you know, I was, you know, reading. Is it on the same note? It is. I was reading that right. in the Bible not too long ago about, you know, the meat and stuff like that and how, you know, we're not supposed to eat meat. And um, going back to the fact that what you were saying about, you know, a certain stuff that you're supposed to eat. Mm-hmm. 
one of them just due to the fact that, you know, that's what they gave us in, you know, substitute for other things that we were supposed to have, like fruits and vegetables. Well, according to the book, it gets confusing. Because in the first place, they tell you that you're supposed to eat from the plants and the vegetables and which was, that was in that garden. Then later on, you'll see that there are sacrifices of animals, and they did partake of these different meats. By the time you get to Leviticus, they're telling you what, what particular meats to eat right. and what not to eat. Right. You know what I'm saying? So at one point, so is there two different gods? I mean, I do probably believe that there's two different gods, however, in this book story. All right. Bible. Mm -hmm. theory. Um, weren't we just only supposed to eat like fruits, vegetables, and um, some of what uh, seafood is? Listen, listen, listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying according to the book. Okay. According to the book. Right. Okay. But if you're not locked in that book, no. then let's go to science. The reality is, is that you have many different beings on the planet. And even if you want to go back to the, the fact that we are aquatic beings, we did come forth from the waters. We do have scales and we do have webs in between our hands and our feet. We do have tonsils, which are gills. All right? We do have other organs that connect it to our higher level of senses. You know what I'm saying? From your appendix, you know what I'm saying? And your tonsils. And your another gland, which was called the baritheri gland, which they actually took out within that book called the Book of Genesis, which is nothing but the genealogy of Isis or Asset. And what they were doing was plagiarizing from our ancient texts of the ancient Sumerian, Babylonian, Akkadian writings, and from your ancient Egyptians or Tamaraean writings. And the thing is, is that where we get lost in the picture is that we're still depending upon a being with an image that is not ours. And within that, we do not know the language. If we knew the language, then we could actually see or accept the image properly. You know what I'm saying? When you talk about mud or dirt being taken from the ground to form a man, then we know that that is not white. Right. And we know that there is no other creature. Basically, I'll put it to you like this. Melanin. Albinos. We are only Melanin melanin. produces what? Um, Color. Something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Color. Pigmentation. And this is a melanin planet. Chlorophyll, if you want to say in plants, same thing. Everything has color. Right. So when you get down to a being or a creature that does not have pigmentation, then how can you say that the all-loving, caring God, you know what I'm saying, of everything within creation that created everything, cares for you when the sun attacks you, that actually feeds that melanin and nurtures that melanin? and gives it the vitamins that it needs as well as messages by way of light and sound. This is the reality. So we have to erase them out of the picture, no more depending upon their image and their likeness, nor their statements, nor their mentality to give us what we need within our image, within our mentality, within our likeness. But the thing is that we can't get down to our mentality we're out of our minds. We're in theirs. So everything that we question upon, we're questioned upon with the senses of what we were already given and what we really depend upon. How many people can keep the mind of a culture mentality when they walk out of here? It's still going to go back to what? I got to pay these bills. I got to do this. I got to do that. People just... And just... I, I understand. Listen to what I'm saying. It's more so in a, in, in, a, in a mentality of the overall, in general. Because regardless if yours don't, or mine don't, or his don't, or his don't, someone else out there does. And if it's one, that's going to affect the whole. So our people do affect us. Our families affect us. Our children affect us. Our mates. <laughs> Our brothers, our sisters, our friends, and so called. Because the reality is, the more you grow in your consciousness, if those people do not, there is going to be a separation. And that's what they're trying to tell us. Our ancient ones do look out for you, and they do care for you.
the way in which you will raise your vibration is first by changing your diet. Changing your mentality, what you feed or what you put in your body. By way of your eyesight, by way of your smell, by way of everything. The clothes that you wear, you have to start changing. You have to put, I'm not saying be an extremist, because we don't believe in that. I'm saying you have to know when to put on your cultural clothes or your custom. And know when to put on your gardener's clothes. You know what I mean when I say gardener's clothes? Like how Jesus put on his gardener's clothes. They didn't know if that was him. He had on gardener's clothes within the garden. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And when he came, when he was amongst his people, when he wasn't running for his life, he had on his traditional customary clothes. So how do we go about following that right diet? That right diet, you know what I'm saying? First of all, you have to know yourself. And you have to know what foods are good for you. You may be a meat eater. And you may be a meat eater by way of the teeth that you have. You can tell. That's one aspect in which Pana Babi Anun has uh, basically guided us and directed us on. It's basically the anatomy of the body and the structure of the body. You have to pay attention. Um, many people, some people have uh, just the two sharp canines on the, on the far sides right here in the front. Right? And then you have those who have straight teeth, mostly flat teeth. That's a vegetarian. That person can be a vegan, vegetarian, and then you have those with uh, a bunch of scissor teeth, you know what I'm saying, throughout their mouth, you know what I'm saying, they are meat eaters. And sometimes you have people who want to be vegetarian or vegan because they're just going by what it says within the book, but they only choose one book in that Bible. If they choose one, then you say, well, what happens by the time you get to Leviticus? Right here it says, yeah, you eat the fruits and the vegetables and so forth, but by the time you get here it says, you know what I'm saying, you can eat meat. So the reality is then some people say, well, I eat kosher meat. Or as they say, halal in, in Arabic, which halal is the name of the devil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And in kosher, certain, certain uh, aspects of kosher gets real disgusting. They can put spit, you know what I'm saying? Everything is kosher by them. It, it, it can get real crazy. And you don't know what type of incantations or prayers that they are reciting over the meat or the food in which they are saying is kosher. You know? That's what I was trying to go into because you know, like um, they say, like you know, they're putting extra preservatives, and you know, they're uh, cloning the meat, and you know, the meat is bigger. Pigs' bigger. blood, beaver semen. Right. I mean, so just all types of crap. You know, like there's, you know, worms can get in people's brains through pork, like you know, all of that. So, like my whole theory was like, okay, well, are we supposed to be eating eating meat? Period. But what you just confirmed. It depends. You know, what I'm saying, see, this is the thing. Is is he is guiding us not to eat meat, point blank, at all. Get off of it. Because there is two, two different gods that you're dealing with within that Bible. Let's just go by the book of Genesis. Cain and Abel, basically, they offered up whatever they knew. You know, uh, what Cain took care of was the grains, vegetables, fruits, and so forth. And he presented what he knew. That God did not take that. That God took the blood meat. And then that after he took the blood meat, you know what I'm saying, as Abel was able to slice it and the blood to flow, it attracted negativity. And from those spirits, that's what overcame Cain to slew his brother. You know, and that's what happens every time when you find drunkards and so forth. You see, people feed forces that they know have no idea about. You know, you have drunkards that basically have all these bruises and cuts on them. You know, and gashes, you know what I'm saying? That's from basically spirits trying to enter them. At different points, push them over, make them cut themselves because it's through the moisture or the plasma of the body in which they have to enter. Mm -hmm. They can enter through any type of moisture from sweat, from, you know what I'm saying? That's the same way people get huffy and puffy in the chest, as they call it in Arabic, they say Nardan Samun, or the Nardan people, the, the, the negative light is actually strucken at that time the spark at that time, you know what I'm saying? So within three seconds, you know what I'm saying, negative beings can enter your being. You are not solid by any means. You are a porous being, and there's nothing solid. All things can be penetrated. This may look solid, but if I was to magnify it with a magnifying glass, 
know what I'm saying? Then I would start to see the little grooves of wood and how it is woven or meshed together. Then if I was even get closer, then I would see the little openings at the points of those interjections of wood going in different directions. And then I would be able to see through. Same way with the skin, you know, or anything on the planet. But this is, you know what I'm saying, the things is what we have to, we have to magnify our lives. That's really what it comes down to. We have to look into our beings and say, what do we partake of? You know, what's better or best fit for me? A little meat might be best, but you have to be choicy. And if it is for you, because some vegans or vegetarians might want to eat just vegetables, but if they have those canine teeth and their breath is a bad breath, then their acids in their stomach are used to digesting meat and they can die because what it is doing is eating away at the inner lining of their stomach and giving them bad breath. So that's dead flesh of their own flesh from within. Something is rotting inside. And so, you know what I'm saying, therefore they have to, you know what I'm saying, you have to, a nutritional, uh, nutritionist, there's nothing wrong with that until you get to know yourself. But you have to get to know yourself. You have to know what you can take and what you can't take. By the time I reached uh, 17, 18, I knew I couldn't drink cow's milk anymore. Lactose intolerant. Then I had to find out what lactose was and, you know what I'm saying, you get what I'm saying? And when, when people use these daily words and everything like that, then that's something. But most people don't even realize they go into a grocery store and they have a health food section. Ain't something wrong? That means the rest of the store is garbage. <laughs> and probably half of the health food stuff is garbage. This is, the, this is the reality. Those are the things that we have to be aware of. We don't see those types of things. This is what Panda Babylon News has been pointing out to us for years. Why don't we see these things within the Bible? Right. But we are reptile beings. We are aquatic. We came onto land. The women were first onto the land. And then the men came. And all men came from women. So even within the mentality of the things that we do, if the children are nurtured right from birth to eating vegetables, to, you know what I'm saying? And, and through that nine month to 12 month period within the womb, if they're being nurtured right, if the man is eating right, by the three month period before the conceiving of the child, you know what I'm saying? Then also that sperm will be healthy and that soul will be healthy, being passed on to the woman. And then from there, the nine months being nurtured right and geared right. Because it takes a lot. Because a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, emotions come into view during that time. Why? Because the organs of the woman is bunched up and mashed up and out of tune. And the only way to keep in tune is those vibrations. And now we do have chants that we do as well. In Nuwapu. In Nuwapuwi. And those chant, uh, those chanting sessions take place every Thursday at 9 p.m. here at this temple. And you can bring your family, bring yourself, bring your loved ones, and you can come. If you don't know the chance, you can come and sit in, feel the vibe. Afterwards, you can ask questions. There's a council of elders, you know what I'm saying, that lead those chants and give us that guidance. And things of this structure are needed within culture. Because one day you'll be at the age where you know all your life you live through something. And you know that you learn many things, but they can't be expounded upon until somebody asks the right question. And some things you just look at and you have to choose your battles. So as you get older, you have no patience. You're not going to be, you know what I'm saying, sitting around in a doctor's office, basically. <laughs> You're not going to be a patient. You might have a little time to guide someone if they're asking the right questions. But other than that, you have to keep moving. So you have to imagine, how old is this being? Upon the baby I know. Over 76 trillion years. <laughs> That's his oversoul that came to him when he was 25. And by the time he was 40, that being became him fully, fully matured within his being. So he is who he says he is. It's just that we have to catch up 
to who he is telling us we are. No being. As we know as ourselves and we look in the reflection of ourselves every day and we see the rhythm we have. We see the common sense we have. None of us would take upon the pains, you know what I'm saying, that outweigh the pleasures for over 50 years for the sake of telling some type of crazy story of I come from another planet and you know I speak over 19 different languages and I change a height, there's many different beings that come through me. I come to here to save you all from destroying yourselves and so forth and on and on and on and on. None of us as black folk are gonna go through that unless we are not what we appear to be, but more so by our actions of what we are and what I tell you that I'm here for. If my actions meet that, then that's what it is. If it quack like a duck, it's a duck. If I tell you that I'm God and I act like God, and you see all the actions of God after you've given the right knowledge about what God is and the terminology of it within its overall meaning of acceptance of what they say God is, they can't even prove it. So he had to correct the situation and give you the true meaning of what God is. Let you know, first of all, it's a German tongue from good. That's how they spoke. Good, good, uh, good. That's how they spoke. We were speaking articulately, our own tones and vibrations in ancient Tamaray, writing our scripts on the walls. Having stories, you know what I'm saying? Not just to say we could write them on, we could have wrote them on papyrus and left it like that. But no, they left them in stone. That's where the terminology comes from. Is it written in stone? Who was writing in stone? We were. So therefore, that's where it comes from. Who was able to read that in stone in this day and time? Panabab Yanun. Who was able to give us that tonation back? To be in touch with those beings that came here, that looked like us, like Michael Jackson said, off the wall. The reality is we are who we are. It's just that we don't accept it. The moment you accept it, everybody else has to accept it. The ID card? Come on. ID theft? Who's the biggest ID theft? Thief in the world. <laughs> Caucasians. Not just the US government, but Caucasians, period, worldwide. You think the US government got power? They don't get no power but by the queen. When their banks get audited, which is their economic structure, which keeps this ball running, as well as your souls, <laughs> and the trading of you and, and, and your birth records and Social security numbers and all that crap. They're still trading you as slaves until you reclaim yourselves. And the only being that has given us that direction and given us the right knowledge about it is partner Babi Anu in this day and time. Everybody else talking about uh, what reparations or you know what I'm saying? It's like, come on, man. Donkeys and you know what I'm saying, acres and land. Come on. Okay. Mm -hmm. and two different meanings of what that could be, basically like um, something about destroying the the, the ethnic um, in in America, something about that. But um, I don't know. I lost it. So well, I'm sure. I mean, I mean, it, if it's I don't know. I mean, the word media itself is dealing with uh, a medium or, or something in between. You know and. Um, and that's the thing. Most people 
they have our minds so dependent upon their society and their system. See, they got you in the system, and that system is in your system. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Instead of, as it says, be in the world but not of it. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, is that you could be in the world but not of it. You can have money but not be in love with money. You know, <laughs> but the thing is, is that we don't have because our minds have dropped what is naturally ours and have given it to others for the dependency on an artificial or synthetic system. See, the thing is that nature speaks for itself. And if we knew those elements, if we get into our science again, our science, not just science, because in the word conscience, you find the word science. But everybody has conscience. You can't say that people ain't conscience. They don't have conscience or they're not conscious. They are. They know what they're doing. Everybody makes a choice every day, every moment of the day. You make a choice on what you want to do. And there's something within your being that says, do that or don't do it. And what is overpowered mostly by the time it, that you make that decision is pleasure. You're looking for the pleasing things of the world. And the more pleasure you have, the more burden, the more pain you're going to have. And many masters have said it. You know what I'm saying? When you seek pleasure, basically, basically what comes out of that or desire, it basically births pain. More pain for you. It's just a thing that you knowing things puts you more in a mentality of a better fight. You step into the world outside of your home, out here into a better fighting position. You have more ammunition, the more knowledge that you knew, the more consciousness that you have, than your choices because they can't take away the choices. That's what they're trying to do. They take away the seeds out of the fruits and the vegetables. Make sure that you're what? Only dependent upon them. See, we have to move in a God speed. When you're taking upon this knowledge, when you're questioning things, you know what I'm saying? Question things with a right state of mind. Don't just question in a skeptical or skeptical mind frame. And I say skeptical like Pana Babi Anun has taught us, people like to skip around and try to find mistakes. But it's fine. What takes place is the main thing of what we have to do is break the spell on our ignorance, ignoring facts. When you're making those decisions, place it or base it upon facts. Don't base it upon what you think and what you know. Because there's many a times that he has written books that stepped on many people's brains and their puny minds and th what they thought they knew. He had to teach people how to drive again. He had to teach people how to speak again. He had to teach many different things because of the reality that, you know what I'm saying, people thought they knew. They're only going by the Caucasians mentality and not going by the reality of what they need. What we need now dominates more so of what knowledge people can have about things that are irrelevant. Like the past. We can talk about Jesus. We can talk about the pharaohs. We can talk about the great kings, the rulers, the great uh, uh, monuments that we have built. We can talk about the great temples and uh, different societies that we have built up in cultures that we have resurrected. But guess what? At the end of the day, there's nothing but ego that has faded away in time. Because what are we doing now? That's what matters. And when you look at our record as Nuwapians, we have built three different cities here in the United States. Worldwide communities for over 20 or 30 years. But see, the moment that we left Islam and all the religion of Hebraic school, of Christianity, and we claim to be who we are, naturally, because there's no other society that's out here that has a science to their name, except Egypt, Egyptology. 
but that's still not the language. So it's still not pinpointing it within the consciousness of our souls and our mentality of how we thought from our essence, how we felt about our living and our essence of every day and interacting with one another and interacting with nature. We weren't nature, we work with nature. Caucasian loves to claim that nature thing. That's why he can go and jog in the rain. <laughs> and it doesn't bother him. But we don't do stuff like that unless we're out of our minds. That lets you know nature is telling you a sign. It's not time to jog. It's not time to walk. <laughs> we have to work with the elements of nature to get ourselves back in track. And one thing is, what's going to help that? Because what is nature called here? What is nature called? What's the title that you put in front of nature all the time? Mother. Mother nature. That's right. So the mothers have to be the ones who we work with. And if you all don't work with us, you are the ones who have more power than what you think to put us back in place. If you use the knowledge to badger your man, your child, then where does that put us? Gender games, gender wars. And you have to come out of that. You have to raise yourself to be gods, for lack of better words. Nataru, for who we are and what runs through our blood. I know when I was in college, I looked at many different things and I got to study people for what they were. And many things that I saw, I saw that Caucasians would have holes in their jeans, holes in their shirts, holes in their shoes, but they have a fat bank account. And they had no worry, they didn't care. We, as Nubians, would dress up every day, iron our clothes, grease our face, lotion our skin, you know what I'm saying, make sure our hair was combed, and get to class, try to be on on time, try to bust our butts for their grades, and still wouldn't match or fit the scale or the bracket in which they, that we wanted to be accepted in their society. If we were to utilize that and still utilize that for ourselves, because nowadays, now we flip flop. Now we're in our culture, people want this dusty look of culture. They want, the, they want to be a part of nature. They want to be dusty. We, we, got, we combed our hair. In ancient Egypt, they had combs and picks. They had gold, 22, 24 carat. That was where all like the cradle of civilization. Those where, where the gods were at. Everyone else stole their information through the language you can trace it, goes back to Egypt. All the holy seeds through the different tribes throughout Africa goes back to Egypt. So what we have to do <laughs> is go to the top. It's not about playing these games anymore. It's 2013. It's not about playing, you know, culture uh, musical chairs. <laughs> or be cultural vampires, or cultural smoothies. Get, go to the top. Pristine purity. That's what he always gave us. The purest of any indoctrination that could come across our minds and our consciousness, our questions and our doubts. He cleared that all up. He put us through it until we asked the right questions to move us on to the next thing that came prior to that. So you could get back to your origin. 